All right, we are back here on the podcast, getting ready for the final golf major of the season. Talk about the Open Championship, as Royal True as you can see behind me on the Zoom background. Join me, as always, to, to break down the golf headlines. Uh, our PGA Tour guy, Dandy Martini, is here. Dan, how are you? I'm doing great. Happy to record this and uh, get into the last major, and then um, as we roll towards the, the end of the season. That's for sure here, so... Let's get into this course a little bit. Royal True, we have not covered it here on the podcast for the Open Championship. What should people who are not familiar with this course need to know about Royal True? Sure. I mean, it's a really special place. Um, kind of when you picture golf in Scotland, you know, everybody kind of has that immediate vision of the varying degrees of dark green, light green, and trouble and deep bunkers and beautiful coastlines and undulating fairways and that's exactly what you're going to get here. It's kind of along the Western coast and it's just got some breathtaking views. Um, look, it's a super hard golf course. Um, the, the, it's, it's intentional too. The way it's best described is that it's kind of broken down into three different sixes. They kind of ease you in with the first six, the next six kind of challenge you with some varying different, um, sight lines off the tee boxes and then lower greens and, and then the final six are just really, really hard. Um, there's kind of two special things about Troon. Um, one, it's it's got one of the most famous par threes in all of golf, which is number eight, and it's called the postage stamp. And it's called that because of how small the green is. Um, it's very, very tiny. Um, it's only 123 yard par three, which is, you know, obviously these guys that are playing professional golf, they can you know, 220 yards is a normal size par three for them. So it's it's not about the distance at Troon. It's about where you put the ball and, um, you know, how you can recover and, and get out of there safely. So um, that's one interesting feature. And then number 11, number 11 is a scary golf hole if you're a right-handed golfer. Thankfully, I'm left-handed. Um, cool. It's kind of famous for the fact that you have a blind tee shot um kind of you can't really see where the fairway is but all you can see is the rail the train basically there's train tracks that go all the way down the right hand side it's one of the hardest holes in all of golf um it's the 11th hole par four it's really going to make or break a, a championship round um really excited to see how the guys play that one um and, and once again one, even if you landed in the fairway then you have a super narrow approach shot to get to the green so it's a really special place. You are going to face heavy winds off the coastline, especially during the, the first few holes and the last few holes. Um, that's what makes golf in Scotland special. Um, you know, weather is always going to play an interesting factor. And, you know, this year it feels like the general trend in the majors is that the weather has not made a huge impact. Um, they obviously had a little bit at the PGA, but you know, I, I, I definitely think that the golf course is going to play um, true to Scotland. It's going to be a great test to finish the season. Yeah, that's for sure here. And uh, what kinds of golfers are going to do well on this course, you feel like? Yeah, I mean, these are, here's the thing that they, you know, talk about a lot over in Scotland. It's <laughs> what's special about golf over there is that it doesn't favor any one particular type of player. And that's why it's the truest test in golf, right? So you've got, you know, guys, if you hit it long off the tee, yeah, you might be rewarded with a shorter shot, but you might have put yourself into a terrible vegetation area or some sort of a very awkward stance where you can barely get your club through. Um, then again, if you're too short off the tee, you might be dealing with having to take multiple extra clubs and the wind is going to impact you. So Distance off the tee doesn't necessarily make a huge distance difference. It's all going to be about putting it in the fairway. And I hate to say it, but really the only thing that's going to favor over there is experience. Um, I tend to feel this year I'm leaning a little bit more towards, you know, players that are, um, you know, non-US based, more international players, maybe have have the uh, the leg up this year, but Brian Harmon proved last year that you don't necessarily need to be, you know, European or, you know, outside the U.S. to be able to be successful. So um, 
unfortunately, there really is not. There's only a couple key stats, which I'll get into with some of my picks that I, I think will be helpful. But unfortunately, there is no, this isn't like you just need to hit it super far and you'll be okay. Um, it, it, it's a true test from, from T to green. Yeah, sure. You mentioned Brian Harney, who won last year at the Open. So obviously very different course than what he won at. So you, I think he's going to do this year. Yeah, you know, look, if you're asking me if he could be a back-to-back -back winner, I think it would be a surprise, but it also wouldn't be a surprise. You know, he's having another really good year. Uh, he's finished 21st. I think he's 20, 20th or 21st in the FedEx Cup right now. Depends on how things shake up this weekend. Um, you know, he's had a, a, a tied for second at the Players' Championship. He was tied for ninth at Travelers this year. He's had, and that was only a few weeks ago. Like, he's had some really good moments. It's not like he's having just a terrible year, which sometimes happens after you have a, a big, you know, kind of landmark win in your career. The next year is kind of like you're coasting a little bit, like you, you know, what's next? But he's just super consistent. And his game fits over there because he he seems to have like a very small variance between, you know, his bad tee shot and his good tee shot. He seems to always put himself somewhere safe. He also just is a cool character and his part of your attitude over there matters. I, I don't think that you're, I think the guys that are going to be successful over there are the ones that are able to kind of think, okay, I hit a bad shot. Let me just get myself back into it and keep going and not let that shot affect me uh, throughout the rest of the hole. So Harmon absolutely would be a surprise just knowing how many of these really big name players throughout all of professional golf, all the tours have been playing so great in the majors. I think it'd be a surprise, but also he you know, he can show any any given week. Brian Harmon has, has proven he can be in the top mix, especially during a major. Yeah, that's for sure here. And uh, you mentioned it before you had some top guys you're watching here for the uh, tournament here. Who are you some guys you think can do well at the uh, Royal Tribune? Yeah, you know, and obviously, you know, you're going to see when, when, you, when you look at just kind of who the odds on favorites are and, and you're going to see the Schefflers and the McElroy. And, and once again, they're both playing great. DeChambeau has obviously proven that he's brought it this year during the majors as well. Those names aren't necessarily, you know, anything that's, you know, earth shattering, but some guys that I do like that I think might break through here. There's, there's a couple. So obviously Ludwig Aubert is a name that can constantly is in the top five discussion in terms of odds makers. Um, something that you won't see very often though is, um, you know, he, he's, he's going to jump onto that leaderboard. He's going to put himself in a good position. And then he might not necessarily hold on to that lead. I think the best thing for Ludwig this week would be, you know, get himself into the mix, but don't be leading the tournament. If he's kind of hovering on Saturday and Sunday, and he's only a shot or two back, I'd feel really good about him getting it done this time because he's so, he's got one of the most beautiful golf swings I've ever seen. Um, I, I just, I got to see him in person, uh, last fall play and he just, the way he swings at a golf ball, it's just like, it's the perfect, it's like the ideal golf swings and, um, he's young, but I think he's proven that he's at, that he can play and compete with the best in the world everywhere he goes. Um, another name, obviously, you know, is it's starting to really catch on with a lot of golf fans. And I think this could be a really interesting week for him too, is Akshay Batia. Um, a lot of people were rooting for him. Um, he was having a fantastic tournament at the Rocket Mortgage and, um, you know, down the stretch, a couple of things didn't go his way, but, you know, people forget he won Valero earlier this year. Um, you know, he's, he, I think he tied for fifth at travelers as well. And he's currently, you know, hovering, I think he's 11th or 10th in the FedEx cup right now too. So he's having an amazing year. He's a young guy. He a super young guy, by the way. Um, I believe 21 or younger right now. He's, he's just, you keep forgetting. You think these guys are, you know, 25, 26, 27, but no, like he's just, just getting his career started here and he's had so much success, uh, success. So I would, I really think this might be an interesting coming out party for him too, just knowing the trend of how he's been playing lately. Yeah, that's for sure. I'm excited to see that here. And obviously one of the fun things when you're watching the tournament here is finding those sleepers, those guys you're not so like well-known who 
might come in like a little off the radar. And then all of a sudden they're in the top 10. They're, you know, like in the mix on Saturday afternoon, trying to make a run here. Who are some of these guys that you like who could be in that? Uh, mix? This, this is, this is going to be one that's kind of near and dear to me because we actually go to the same gym uh, workout facility. So um, a guy, I don't know if people have really been paying attention too closely, but Aaron Rye. Okay. So a lot of people know because he wears the black golf glove. Um, he is a, a player right now who's just absolutely scorching hot and you can tell that he's put in the work i got to, i've seen him train with his with his training staff and whatnot and this guy works super super hard in the gym he's got his body in great shape and he's just really ready to continue to make a big push i mean i don't think people have processed this but i think in his last five tournaments played he's finished in the top 20 in every single one of them he finished tied for second at rocket mortgage tied for seventh at john deere a T4 at Genesis Scottish Open, which just finished. Um, I mean, he he's an, a name that is trending right now upward. And um, I think there's a couple reasons why. I had to do a deeper dive into this. He's currently number one on tour in driving accuracy, meaning fairways hit. And that's pretty shocking that a guy that most people haven't necessarily, he's not like one of these in the, the common golf knowledge or golf chatter. Um, but he's literally number one in driving accuracy. He's also top five in strokes gained, which is a little bit more of a complicated stat to describe for a podcast. But just know that Scotty Scheffler is number one and he's only four spots back. So anytime you're really close to Scotty Scheffler in a statistical category, you're doing great. And then he's third in greens and regulation. So he's hitting fairways better than everybody. And then he's hitting greens and regulation, meaning at the appropriate distance after on a par three, I'm sorry, a par four, or par five. So that means that he's giving himself to make chances to make birdies. So here's a guy who, if he can go out and hit fairways and greens over there, he's going to have a lot of success. Um, and, and I really think um, he's an English born, I believe English born player. And, but you know, he's a Florida native now and, and um He's been, I've, I've gotten just the privilege to kind of see a little bit of the work he's doing behind the scenes. And I think it's a cool story. I really hope he breaks through. And, and that's a name that most people wouldn't be saying could be going uh, to win this event, but I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. It feels like he's a guy based on what you're describing. If he would do well at the postage stamp hole. Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, I got one other name that I, I just, I feel like every time I turn on a major, um, this guy it, it constantly in round one and two is is right up there. And that's Thomas Dietrich. He's from Belgium. Um, it's one of those things where I don't know what it is, but, you know, he when when it's a big time event, he shows up. He finished tied for fourth at the PGA Championship this year. I think people may have seen Dietrich's name on the board, but they just didn't necessarily connect at all. But and then he was tied for 14th at the U.S. Open. So here's a guy that not a lot of people know you know, as a, as a, you know, dominant, you know, PJ tour winner, or a DP world tour player as well in the past. And, and, but he's got two other top tens on the PJ tour this year. He's currently 30th in the FedEx cup and he's just having a really, really good year. And I think that um, I wouldn't be shocked if, if you were going to tell me, okay, which of the four majors would Dietrich's game fit best, especially being from Belgium, like being from overseas, you would have to say the open championship. So, and if he was T4 and T14 at the last two, then maybe this is one to be in the mix too. So Dietrich and Rye are two names that would be on my sleeper list. All right. That's good to know here. And obviously it's good. Our winner picks on the board here. And I feel like if I remember correctly, all three majors, you have picked Scotty Scheffler. Is it a clean sweep? Or are you going somewhere else? Ooh, I'm going to go somewhere else. I, I I mentioned it earlier, but I'm going to go with Ludwig. Um, I, I think that Ludwig O'Bear is, is, this is his coming out party. I think the Open Championship is, it just plays differently. This golf course is so drastically different than everything else that these guys have played major-wise this year. It, it, it Just from seeing the background that behind you there, Mike, like you can just tell it's it's a different test. Um it's going to wear them out. You have to be super consistent. You have to have every piece of your game tight right now. Um, Scotty makes a lot of sense to win this one, but I feel like I just have to lean towards let's go with something fresh. Let's 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 have Ludwig 
kind of cement himself as this next big up and coming name um, that's going to be um, kind of a challenge to the U.S. players, um, you know, kind of going forward when it comes to President's Cups and uh, and things of that nature. So I, I'm excited for him, and I think it's going to be a really great week of golf. Absolutely, Dan. Thanks for all the time. Really appreciate it. If you want to follow you on social media, how can I do that? Yeah, DMART207. And, um, you know, I think that we've got uh, a really cool thing coming up with golf coming back to the Olympics in, in just a week and a half or so. And, um, you know, you've got Wyndham Clark and Xander Shoffley. You got Scotty Scheffler and Colin Morikawa representing the U.S. So, um, you know, it'll be really interesting to see them play um, over in Paris and, um, you know, go USA.